All right, thanks a lot, Corbin. First up, authentic Irish cuisine with St. Paddy's Day just over a week away. We're celebrating the holiday this morning with a delicious recipe straight from the heart of Ireland. And here with one of her favorite traditional dishes is Chef Rachel Gaffey. Welcome back, Rachel. Get over, don't be afraid. I'm not going to bite you. Great to see you again. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. And uh, we were laughing before the show and, and uh, actually in the meeting this morning. Um, we have Irish chefs on a lot. And you guys do nothing to dispel the stereotype that the Irish drink. No. Because every time we have an Irish chef on, it's either, oh, we're cooking with Jameson today, or today we're cooking with uh, some uh, Celtic Crossing liqueur. Explain what this is. Uh, Celtic Crossing liqueur actually came out around in the mid-90s, and it came out to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the famine. Oh, So, of wow. course, we all know it was 1845, mass yes. immigration to Ireland, so held the name Celtic Crossing, where they crossed over here. Beautiful. But this is made out of, this is actually typically mead. Mead is, uh, originates from honey. Yes. And um, in actual fact, that's where the name honeymoon comes from. Okay. Um, I, in long time ago, in the weddings in Ireland, they would cheers to mead, and when the couple left, they'd give them enough mead to last until the first full moon. That's Hence a lot the name of mead, honeymoon. That's, yeah, every new moon, that's a 30 days worth of mead. That's a lot. Good times. We love it. Uh -huh. What you know? What symbolizes Irish cuisine? What is it? Is there a staple? Is it? Is it the potato? Is it? Uh, you know? Is there an ingredient that really um, sets forth? Uh, okay, this is Irish. Sets it apart from any other cuisine. Okay. Well, this is why I started my business. Is I wanted people to understand what Ireland is really about, and I keep saying this that it's not just about green beer and cabbage. Right. And whilst I love that St. Patrick's Day mm -hmm. and do the rest of it, but it is about the natural ingredients and um, sustainable agriculture, you know, whether it's from the bush, the berries, to the drinks, to the butters and cheeses which we make. Like I've got some samples oh, beautiful. here. beautiful. Yeah, what do we have up here? This is Kerrygold Irish butter. That's a salted butter and that's an unsalted butter. Okay. And this is just a sample of their cheeses, which actually I'll be using to cook with in the culinary school for the next two days in Byerly, St. Louis oh, Park. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. But they're, you know, the natural color. Look, here's the butter. Okay. This is Kerrygold butter, which is what I use in my shortbreads. I make traditional Irish butter shortbreads. Yeah, and that color, yeah, that... Beautiful, that is. Yeah, that golden color actually is the natural color because the cattle in Ireland are grass-fed. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the natural beta we carotene. We love that. Yes. yes, and the cattle here are grain-fed. So this mm -hmm. yields a wonderful, um, wonderful product. Oh, does it smell good? It's fantastic. What and are we cooking up today? So what I'm doing is, this is my shortbread. I make um, traditional Irish butter shortbread cookies. Wow. <laughs> Shot glasses, come on. Come on. And uh, so I'm going to make um, a Celtic Crossing uh, liqueur uh, cake out of the shortbreads. So we're just, there's, this is the box. I've just taken them here and put them in, um, and in a container and just crumb them. So all you're going to do is crumb them like this. Okay. So and we see yeah. yep, we got a shot above. See that mm -hmm. camera up there? And okay. uh, like I said, I've got some here. And uh, what you're going to use is you're going to use four cups of them, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to take some unsalted butter, which is about, I use about one and a half teaspoons only of the Kerrygold. Mm -hmm. If you're using a domestic butter, you probably need to use a little bit more, maybe two teaspoons. Okay. But this is all I use. And you're going to melt it. And um, as this is live TV, I forgot to melt the butter. <laughs> right? So, of oh, course... Oh, put this away from her. <laughs> That's what's going on here. You can't fool us, Rachel. Okay, so let's pretend it's melted. Let's so here it's all it melted rolling. and it's in here and it's mm -hmm. all mixed, okay? Yeah. No, but you're going to use a nine inch spring form pan, okay? Mm -hmm. I've just used a smaller one here. This we have a finished inch. product, don't we? We do. Okay, let's here. not worry about it. Let's just keep mixing. So all it would be is you put this in here, okay, with mm -hmm. this melted and you're going to pass it down. The, uh, it, the, the recipe is actually on the uh, website. But mm -hmm. what you're going to do is do this, pack it down, mm -hmm. and then you're going to put it in a preheated oven at about 325 degrees for approximately seven or eight minutes until this is golden. Okay. You take it out, keep it, leave it aside, and that's it, okay? Okay. And leave that here. You're going to take some ice cream, some vanilla ice cream, okay? Perfect. So. Oh, it's soft. You yeah. Have, you, you just need it at room temperature. Okay. And then you're just going to put all of this in. Move this to the side here. Okay. So you're going to keep doing I'll this. Take the cookies. These are really good. By Do you the want way. some of this? Huh? No, no. So I'm going to use. I actually. Not me. <laughs> oh, I'll come with you. Not. Let's go off. It's this Friday, right? <laughs> yes. And so what it I'm is. going to use here is um, I've got a quart of it here, and I actually used an entire quart in this, okay, okay. for this. And then I took a container of raspberries and used one third of the container and put them in here, mm -hmm. okay. And you're just going to keep mixing all of this, and of course. I always like to put a little bit of booze in here. And then what you're what going did to I do tell is you folks. Keep an eye on this one. <laughs> like I said, everything's better with booze. Um, and then you're just going to pack that into this. And okay. then you literally just put it in the freezer until you're ready to serve. So that's pre-baked. Yep, ten Let minutes. It cool. Mix this together, put it with that, 
Throw it in the freezer. That's it. That's it. And take it out, and you just open the springform pan, and then what I do is I marinate the remaining raspberries in the Celtic crossing, of course. Of course. And then put it in on top, and then we just sprinkle the top. And that's and it. And that's it. It's very easy. And you'll get that wonderful, rich um, flavor from the shortbread with the, the butter coming through, that real buttery taste. I do not add sugar to that base. You mentioned you're in town at Byerly's. You're going to be giving demonstrations there? Yeah, I'm doing classes tonight and tomorrow at St. Louis Park. And then all afternoon I'll be in the kitchen cooking from about 1 o'clock. And you can come by and try some of the butters and cheeses, and you don't have to book for this. Okay, now, all afternoon. Uh, are you going to cook with the butters and cheeses? Are you going to make am. this? Are you going to demonstrate this again, or are you going to be I doing am. other Irish dishes? I'm doing other ones. I'm actually doing a called lamb foilon. I'm doing a leg of lamb with an Irish whiskey marmalade. Of course, it's got Irish whiskey. In it. I, she brought this cookbook with her, and, uh, and and I'm not making fun of Rachel. She brought up the fact she's like, look at this cookbook. They all have booze in them. <laughs> But that's why we love the Irish cuisine. I should have asked, you know, I said, what symbolizes Irish cuisine? I should have just said booze, right? That's what you could have said. No. Uh, I'm sure there are some things in here that are alcohol-free as well. Yep. One quick question. Sure. If you're going to make the cliché corned beef and cabbage, do you have any secrets for that? Uh, no. Just... It is what it is. Uh, you know, I really don't. Um, I uh, Well, the cabbage I'm very particular about. I only use the green cabbage. The, okay. The kale. See, that's what I'm looking for. And the kale is really, really good. And when the kale is left over, when you boil that and chop it afterwards, you make cold cannon out of it. Cold which cannon. is mashed potatoes and leftover green cabbage chopped finely into it with a little bit of butter. Wonderful. Is it just us that celebrate St. Paddy's Day, or is that a big day over in Ireland? Oh, too? God, no, we celebrate it, too, but not the same way. We don't dye our rivers or any of that. It's a little bit more religious. It is, okay. In actual fact, my maiden name, uh, as you know, is Gaffney, and this is quite embarrassing, really, but we hail back from the King of Ireland, Nile of the Nine Hostages, in the 300s. Wow. And our claim to fame was we kept St. Patrick hostage. So, so here got, I got a lot of making up to do. <laughs> well, let's, I think we'll start with this. There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> Not Great at to all. See you, again. see you, Rob. You bet. For a copy of today's recipe, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address on your screen, or you can log on to our website, showcaseminnesota.com, and search under the dessert category. For more great recipes, check out Rachel's celebration of Irish Fair cooking classes. There's one tonight at 7 and one tomorrow at noon, both at the Byerleys in St. Louis Park. For more information, log on to Showcase.